Who is Enchi Postiglo? Why spread this sign him? Is he any good? Well, why we don't watch together and we're going to find the five reasons parents signed him for. And number five will be very important. I have many Spurs fans and they all told me the same thing. Typical of Levi, signing unproven manager who never managed a big club before just because he's damn cheap. And you know what? They are right because he's cheap and not demanding and that was the main reason or reason number one why Levi signed him. Levi had a bad experience with Conte because Conte labeled himself as an elite manager which is debatable but he has a good reputation so he can't demand and that led to problem in the end and he went publicly on his demand and it went bad for Levi and even for Spurs so it was a big mistake which I was sure Levi is not going to replicate and he did because he chosen a manager who will not be demanding and he will work with the budget so he ticked all the boxes in this regard and it's going to cost him even, I think, less than 5 million to sign him. So it was a good deal that is typical of Levi. So that's reason number one. Now let us go to reason number two, which is he is charismatic and have an authority. As something spares going to need if you want to challenge for that title. But he's in top four. And it's not only I've seen him doing the post-match interview, it's the testimony of players and managers or people who work with him. Like, for example, one time, I remember very well, a uh, translator asked him to repeat what he said. He basically told him to shut up and carry on what he's doing and move on and let us go home earlier. Another time, someone, a reporter asked him a question. He didn't like it. So basically he told him, seem you cannot see the obvious. Another match, another reporter said him something else. So he didn't like it. I told him, why are you repeating yourself? He has a charisma. And we can see it here from even people who work with him, like his teammate and Kelly Doris. You see, he's highly intelligent and extremely analytical as a manager. He is a master of hilarious wit and cutting sarcasm. And we can see that in his interviews. Other testimony is players for played with him, like Ryan McQuan. It is his way or the highway. There is no in between. Unless you buy into it, you will be out of the door. It's clear that he has a plan. If you are not sticking to that plan, you are out. And I think every big club, they need to have a manager like that. So he ticked that box for spares. Now, reason number three is very important. And it is regarding his football style. He is an attacking minded manager. And that's something Levi needed because all the protests against him and his bad reputation and Conte uh, defensive to play and even the previous manager who was defensive as well. So... I think he wants to reinvent again the spares who are attacking style, which the fan gonna love. So that tick another box for Levi because it will ease the pressure on him. Reason number four is to do with trends. You look around and you see everyone is copying Pep Guardiola's style of football with the inverted players closing down. So what he said, if everyone having their own mini Pep why I don't have my spares mini pep? If Arsenal have Arteta, the mini pep, well, spares, we're going to have an answer to that question as well. We're going to have our own mini pep. Now we reach reason number five, which is the most important one, in my opinion, at least. It is his tactical adaptability. He's able to adapt not only to New League, because he managed in Australia, Japan, and Celtic, and he was adapting to each league and the difference between them. And not only ability to learn and modify on his tactic and system, seeing what other managers do, what kind of added to his system, mistakes he do, add to it. So he's improving his system every time. But most importantly, he's able to invent a system that fits his players. I like Guardiola or Klopp or Arteta or other managers. They need to change the whole team to fit their system. 
they have plan A. Guardiola improved the system a little bit more. Um, he's become much more flexible. But for him, he was able really to adapt and create a system that fit his players, which is something, I think, a key for a good manager. And he ticked that box, definitely. And we're going to see in the next examples how he was able to change the system according to his players. Now, this is Australia in 2014 and 13 when he managed in first time. He had Tim Cahill. He played 4 2 3 1 with Tim Cahill as a key player because he was scoring goal for fun for Australia and Premiership for Everton. So he liked to use him as a second striker most of the time. He's good in a header, and that's why he asked his player to become close to each other and do short passes, but sometimes send crosses as well to the box, especially taking advantage of his player are taller than the people in Asia. So he used that system very well. His full box was all the time attacking and even his two midfielders joined them as well. So sometimes he ended up with eight players on that on the half of the other side. They were a very good attacking Australian team, which did very well. And they reach work. Now let us look at an example of Australia in 2013. They are playing for 2-3-1. That's the attacking phase. And you can see when they have the ball, you can see straight away that full backs are now wingers, basically. Look how hard they are. And this is the two center uh, midfielders. And you have how they are connecting to the people on the front. Then you can see the same defensive line, how the basically the full backs are attacking, you know. And the two uh, center midfielders and how they are joining with uh, uh, Tim Cahill and how the full bus can run all this distance. They have all of that advantage there. Defensively, when they are defending, you can see the four lines, they are close to each other. The two center, back, uh, center midfielders and you have those three players, which is the uh, Wingers and Tim Cahill, they come coming back to defense. Sometimes the striker as well join and Tim and Cahill stay up front. So you can see the same system that keep the shape. And how they are compact in a small area. Four years later, he has different problem now. He had four good midfielders. So what he did, he put them in the team. Then he built a whole team around him. And that's why you have that system now. With three in the back, they can protect the sides. They can create five solid compact players there as well in the center. And with full backs attacking, and those two attacking as well, joining the strikers. So you can like five front lines, and even those two can join them as well. So still was attacking side, but he used his strength in individual and create a system that fit them and they qualified as game for the World Cup and they did very well. Here you can see the 2017, 3-4-2-1, the attacking position. You can see the five players, the three in the back, the two full backs, how high they are, the two center midfielders or defensive midfielders, the two which is attacking midfielders and how they're close to each other and how the flank is fought by those running of those full backs. And defensively, you can see as well how they organize the same five. They are compact, they are basically creating a wall and you have the two DM or CM then you have the two attacking midfielders are creating a very compact place which make it difficult for a team to crack them but when they attack they attack in them now in Yokohama that was where he started the first time having the pip influence with the full backs making those invert level run and the center midfielders trying to cover them out sometimes they stay and they can create a seven players in that center area to create the domination. The defending and closing down as well from Pep and it was mostly in the middle. They allowed them, the striker was just trying to stop the passing, but the whole closing down was from the middle area. But again, as you can see, once they join them, they become too powerful and they're going to dominate the midfield area, which is make it very hard for team to crack them down or even to try to run away from their closing down. You can see now in Yokohama team, 4-3-3, and that's the attacking wise. When they attack, you can see the, the full line and the full box is a bit higher. 
you can see that triangle between the mid players and the attacking midfielders and you can see those blue line because they can exchange positions with the inverted position and you can see the the line attacking line how far it is and how they are creating space and making it difficult for the defenders to defend in attacking they keep the same shape and you can see his four those two three in the middle with the attacking midfielder and those wingers with the striker as well they come back defending now once he joined celtic you can see one of the key difference is almost the same but he was much more inverting than before like the full box was really going into the midfield area and they kept targeting those ones and the wingers were even much more wider because they wanted to create more of that space but uh, closing down wise they were closing down much more to that line here instead of the mid so they were closing him in numbers much more higher than he was with Yokohama and we can see it in some examples now that's Celtic 2022 4-4-3 it says 4-3-3 but it was 4-4-2 but I'm going to show you how much he committing players look how many players he have 4-4-2 the 10 players already in the other team's half and they were 1-0 up against Shakhtar so he is a very attacking manager but you're going to see he's going to pay the price of that because they can uh, Shakhtar cut the ball counter attack you can see the defensive line they are out of position you can see the midfield giving lots of space out of position as well and uh, Shakhtar scored from that one uh, attacking wise you can see the four in the back you can see the three players in the middle and you can see the three wingers there as well here you can see the commitment of Celtic in the box and you're going to see that a lot I think in spares and you can see two players already on the half space so that shows how they are going to play uh, defensive wise you can see the four lines here they can see those three players and you can see those three attacking players up front and you can see those six players they're gonna close down very high so those success gonna try to take the ball and they did really manage to do that and you can see the six line as well how once they get the ball they have too many players up front and they can score easily from that uh, when they defend you can see the four line the four players the line is very close to each other the three players in the mid as well very close to each other now what is my verdict i think he's a good gamble and I think Spurs going to play attacking football, attractive football. And I think they're going to pay price for that. They're going to concede goals. And I think he will struggle at the start until he adapts to the system, until his player adapt to his style because he needs to drill them in the training. And a few months is not enough. But I think if Spurs were patient with him, he will do very well in Spurs. Overall, I think the rating of this signing is for me 8 out of 10 because uh, there is a risk element on it but overall he's a very very good signing for Spurs and people shouldn't be surprised some people underestimate this manager I think he's a very good manager and his ability to learn and adapt is incredible and many key managers they don't have that ability so let us see and wait for the next season and thanks for listening and if you like the video please like and subscribe until we see you in another video take care